Oh, hey, you're here. I'll catch up with you. Sorry, I'm just on my way out, but your workstation's at the back over there. It should be all set up on the network, but let the guys know if it isn't. From there, you can access all the data you need to help us direct development of the car. Get yourself settled, and then head out to practice when you're ready. I'll catch up with you later, okay? Welcome to your new team. Alfa Romeo Racing is the kind of team that other privateers aspire to be. No matter the challenges they face, this is a team that rises to the occasion and makes it out the other side. They need someone who can be consistent, resilient, and determined. And there's no doubt in my mind that you can give them those qualities. Hey, what's up, guys? Arab here. Welcome back to my F1 2019 career mode. Episode number two today for the start of my F1 season. We had episode one uploaded earlier today, this morning. That was all to do with the F2 story mode and the basic feeder series into Formula One. And now episode two, here we are at the Australian Grand Prix, ready to start our F1 career with Alfa Romeo Racing. We signed with the end of last episode. If you haven't seen it yet, be sure to go check it out. There's an annotation in the top right, and we had a, a very tasty finale race in that, so very much worthwhile checking out. And so it's going to be three wide. Butler on the left, Weber on the right, three wide with our two rivals in the F2 story mode. You can't make this stuff up. Absolutely amazing stuff. Weber's now down my inside. This is quite something. What is the, What are the chances of a three wide moment like this? Epic, epic stuff. Into the chicane with the very two story mode characters we're going to take through into F1. Absolutely awesome way to start off the episode one here. But here we are now at the Australian Grand Prix in Alfa Romeo Racing alongside Kimi Raikkonen you would have seen there who has sat opposite us in this uh, motorhome so uh, yeah we're partnering the Iceman I'm sure a lot of people will be happy about that, about that all the Kimi fans out there that have loved his move to Alfa Romeo essentially back to Sauber where he started his career and we're alongside him so that's gonna be quite exciting to have an experienced man so hopefully he'll be pushing me hard and I can try and push him hard and we can really you know motivate the whole team upwards it's gonna be quite a tough one to be fair because if we look at the R&D of the team. Uh, the game's done Alfa Romeo quite, quite bad in a way. Like, you know, the engine's okay. We're in the middle way of the department, but the aero is abysmal. We have the worst aero on the grid. We're worse than Williams on the grid. Now, obviously, this could change because, remember, I'm playing this game uh, a lot earlier than the actual game comes out for the general public, so there might be a day one patch where the performance levels change for every team, so there might well be a little bit of a bump for Alfa Romeo in the aero and chassis department because, in my opinion, they're not this horrible in real life really but it kind of does make things kind of really interesting actually for us because it really means that we're on basically a road to glory here with Alfa Romeo Racing you know we're gonna have to really work hard to just get them into a solid midfield position which I talked about in episode one why I chose them you know was because you know they're a good feel little midfield team want to try and establish them and try and see what we can do about taking on the kind of top midfield guys before we work on whatever comes after season one but it's gonna be a real challenge I think and a real uh, amount of work to get them into just a solid midfield run so it's uh hopefully me and Kimmy will try and find the speed but uh first and foremost just got to get through the Australian Grand Prix and get into practice for the very first time on this game uh looking through just the rest of the menus remember that we've now got the 2019 tyre rules so all the tyre compounds they're all just going to be called soft medium and hard from now on which is the red wall yellow wall and uh, white wall tyres from now on even though the actual rubber compound is different but uh just FYI if you don't if you didn't remember that that's how it's going to go now but after looking at the R&D and the emails I don't think there's any other kind of housekeeping to do around here so let's just dive into the race weekend and get to practice welcome to melbourne and the inaugural event of the f1 2019 championship season the session is starting shortly and there's a real sense of anticipation in the air a feeling that anything can happen this year and if it does well this weekend could be the opening chapter to one of the most exciting f1 seasons ever Joining me in the commentary box is, of course, Anthony Davidson. And it's great to have you back again. What can you tell us about this year's roster? Uh, there are some new faces this year, aren't there? Absolutely, Crofty. There's been a number of interesting signings over the last few months. Where would you like to start? Let's talk about the engineer. Right, well, this is definitely someone to keep an eye on. Well, they've been signed up likely in no small part due to the way they carried themselves in the Formula 2 Championship. They have a great track record of putting the team first, at one of the races, they even gave up their own position when their car had a technical issue so that their teammate, Lucas Weber, who also debuts here today, could get ahead. That kind of team spirit could take them a long way this season. Those two aren't the only new faces from Formula 2 this season, are they? No, this season will introduce fans to George Russell and Lando Norris, two very promising young British drivers. Plus, we'll meet Alexander Albon from Thailand and finally Devon Butler. 
Now, Devon was a bit of a controversial figure in Formula 2 last year. He racked up a lot of penalties over the course of the season, including one where he collided with his closest rival. It was an arsy clip. Now, certainly after the event, they were nothing but professional in terms of how they spoke about the incident with Devon, but it's hard to imagine them being as polite about it behind closed doors. I think this rival will be one to keep an eye on over the next few races as both drivers take their first steps into the world of Formula 1. All right, so here we are in our new home in the Alphamere racing car, and it's a, it's a very lovely looking car, actually. So on top of me just choosing it for other reasons, it's a very nice looking car as well to drive in terms of from the T-cam. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's always, a, it's always a plus when your car is good looking. But we're going to quickly check it in practice. I wanted to see where on earth Lucas Weber and Devin Butler ended up. So Devin Butler is now in Torossa alongside Alex Albon, and Lucas Weber is alongside George Russell in the Williams car. So that's where our two F2 story mode rivals have gone to for the F1 2019 season here, season one of the career mode. So it'll be interesting to see how Weber does in the Williams and how Butler does in the Toro Rosso. Those two rivals will choose teams alongside the team you've chosen in terms of performance. So if you were to choose someone like Ferrari, they would go in Mercedes and Red Bull, for example. So I've chosen Alfa Romeo, and so they've gone around me with uh, those two teams there. But we go through practice then, of course, track acclimatization, the ERS management, tyre management, all that good jazz to get the R&D, but I'm not going to bore you with having too much of that in these videos in the career mode series here and of course the usual kind of getting to grips with the car and having a bit of an off and a mistake here and there but uh, then we're just going to go into some uh, interview questions after practice and then get straight into quality. It's been a lot of hard work but here you are making your debut in Formula One. You must be thrilled. Yeah, of course, absolutely thrilled to be in Formula One, obviously, especially after winning the F2 Championship, very uh, deserved, I think, but the hard work does not stop. We have to do even harder work to try and get this team up. So how are you finding things at the team? Are you settling in? So this was a tough one because I didn't really know how to answer this one. I wanted to try and butter up the team a little bit. So I went with the right-hand side answer there and said you don't get into F1 without being one of the best, uh, best people around. But that didn't actually do anything for the reputation. What are you expecting out of this season? Are you just aiming to find your feet in Formula One or do you see something more? And finally, here was a good chance to big up the team and try and get some reputation with them by saying Alfa Romeo Racing have put a lot of faith in me and hopefully I can put it back with them and secure them some good points. Appreciate your time. We're just about ready to kick off today's qualifying here in Melbourne. It's the Australian Grand Prix. So then, Ant, it's another Grand Prix weekend, another exciting qualifying session ahead of us. What are you going to be looking out for over the next few minutes? The first question is going to be who can avoid making mistakes. There isn't much margin for error in qualifying, and you have to bear in mind that the track conditions may have changed since practice, particularly as we've had a few support races in the meantime. If the brake bias settings, for example, don't take this into account, it's extremely easy to lock up a front wheel and cause a flat spot. Just like that, your lap's ruined, and you've wasted a set of tyres to boot. Right, so here we are getting into qualifying then. The first time you're getting to see the onboard, finally, of the Alfa Romeo racing car. And this will be the first time we drive this car with any sort of anger on the track here in Q1. Now, the objective will be trying to get out of Q1 because this car isn't fast. You know, we saw on the R&D screen we're the second worst team on the grid. And so, therefore, I'm kind of expecting us to have a bit of an issue maybe getting out of Q1. Let's see. Also, at the same time, getting used to the handling model in this first episode, this first race of the season. Very, very difficult to get used to. It is a different handling model to last year. There's a general sense of understeer now on this year's game compared to last, which is realistic because obviously with the modern F1 cars, they are very understeery. They look understeery on the TV cameras. We've seen drivers like Leclerc note that he had to kind of adapt his driving style to kind of, you know, like the understeer feeling because he wasn't kind of used to it compared to the oversteer you get with F2 cars here. But uh, obviously also the, the only kind of practice I did for Australia was getting through those practice programs to get the R&D. So I was still kind of dialing into the car uh, in essence and getting used to it there. So the first flying lap wasn't amazing. It was still good enough to beat Raikkonen at the time as we fast forward through this session. But as we go through this session, then we go down the order. People are setting fast lap times there. And eventually uh, we're down in P16, Raikkonen P18. Now remember, it's uh, the cutoff point is P15. So we need to try and do better here. We are in P15 right now. But uh, it's going to be mighty fine. We're beating Butler right now. So we're beating one of our F2 rivals. I think Weber is doing a madness right now in the Williams car. Doing very well. So we'll have to see. But we do gain a decent amount of time in the first sector there. Quite a decent amount carrying through. A lot of momentum I found in, in, in the first turn. Especially trying to go a little bit slower in and then faster out. You know, the old karting method, if you will. And we carry that speed through down the back straight. Like I said, the engine wasn't too bad in the Alfa Romeo car. And it definitely feels quite good. I, I can feel it's a bit punchy once we get up the uh, ERA 
DRS modes. And so we go through the final two corners, not trying to lose too much speed through the left-hander in second gear, then up the gears into fourth gear, just about on the exit, and then parting the power down, opening DRS then, and running to the line. We've gained about four tenths there on the top right, maybe about five tenths across the line. And even though we gained quite a few tenths there, it's only going to be an improvement up into P14. So just showing, like in real-life Formula 1, the midfield is so close. There's no real back marker. It's just so close from, like, the P7 position, best of the rest, all the way down to P20. Very, very close stuff there. And so at the results screen, Q1... Both myself and Raikkonen are knocked out there. I qualify in P17. He qualifies in P16. Lucas Weber doing a great job in the Williams car. Look how quick he is compared to George Russell there. So I don't know if that's going to carry on for the entire season. But it looks like Weber is essentially Verstappen to Gasly. If uh, Russell was Gasly, essentially, or that in the Williams car. He's done a madness there. So kudos to my former teammate, who obviously I was quite friendly with in, F2, in the F2 story mode. Uh, but at least we beat Devin Butler. We beat the man I wanted to slap in the first episode. So at least we've got that going for us but you can clearly see we've got to have a lot of work to do on the car uh, but I'm still happy with that because we kind of almost matched Raikkonen you know we're close we're right next to him in, in the grid so I can't be too disheartened that's more the car really this stage being that slow despite me not feeling comfortable with the car and the handling model quite yet in this first race of the season the car is clearly just that quick anyway in the hands of Raikkonen so can't be too disheartened let's go on to Sunday then and let's see what we can do come the race New drivers, new cars, it's a new Formula One season. But it's the same Albert Park that we've come to know and love for more than two decades now, the place host to round one of a 21 race championship that takes us from here in Australia, across the globe, and the eventual season finale at the Yaz Island circuit in Abu Dhabi. We go racing today then in the state of Victoria where the drivers have 16 corners and 3.3 miles to navigate at an average lap speed of around 120 miles an hour. The close proximity of the barriers makes accidents inevitable and recent history shows us that a safety car is not at all out of the question. We have plenty of changes to the sport this year with tweaks to the regulations, a fresh looking spread of tyre compounds and of course some changes to the roster of car manufacturers. It's goodbye to Salba and hello once again to the classic name of Alfa Romeo in Formula 1. It's also goodbye to Force India, they've been rebranded as Racing Point. Joining me to take you through all the action of the 2019 Formula 1 season is Anthony Davidson, and it's great to have you with us. Thanks Crofty, always happy to be here and I'm looking forward to getting underway. Last year was Mercedes' fifth constructors title in a row, although for the first half of the season it was absolutely neck and neck with the Ferraris. Hopefully this year we can see the chasing pack take that final step, as I'd love to see a championship contest all the way up to the final race in Abu Dhabi. Another story to keep an eye on is the performance of Red Bull, who have switched to the Honda power unit this year. What that will mean for both their performance and reliability remains to be seen. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. Young superstar Max Verstappen starts from pole position and it's Charles Leclerc in P2. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Hamilton, Bottas, Pierre Gasly and Perez, Ricardo, Hülkenberg, Sainz and Roman Grosjean, Vettel, Magnussen, Lance Stroll and Norris. Weber, Raikkonen, The Engineer, and Devon Butler. Albon and George Russell ends our grid lineup. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go down to the track. Okay, here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me down. Well, the tension is rising a little bit here and the excitement levels are building as we get ready for our first race, our first F1 race in F1 2019 career. And of course, we've done the F2 races, but that was an entire different kettle of fish. But here we are then, the strategy screen. Uh, it's going to be a one-stop or a two-stop. At the moment, my team has default selected the two-stop, which is interesting. And I kind of like that because it's good to see they're maybe thinking along the same aggressive lines as I, as I do because a lot of the times I do prefer a bit of a low-tire wear management and a bit more of aggressive uh, strategy in the races uh, remains to be seen which one's the best obviously it says timing wise just a little bit quicker on the one stop but I don't know the tyre wear levels honestly quite yet it's hard to tell in practice what the tyre wear levels were going to be like so it's a kind of stab into the dark and unknown and a lear learning curve really in this first race so we're going to go with the two stop two sets of the soft tyre to one set of medium at the end of this Grand Prix go down a little bit on fuel but still have a decent amount because remember obviously these are season one career mode cars now in F1 2019 so the fuel saving is going to be quite poor 
four, actually. So we're going to have to try and uh, be a bit heavy on fuel every single time for this first season and try and maybe do some upgrades later on on the engine. But uh, I'm raring to go. Let's get into this then. We're a little bit further uh, back down the order than I wanted to maybe with the Alfa Romeo Racing Team. But Raikkonen's right there. So that's where the car is. Let's just both work hard in this race and try and see if we can get up the order. And dare I say it, maybe even get some surprise points. I'm not too sure. It might be quite hard, but let's see how it goes. As we now go to five red lights. So the Swelling Grand Prix, round number one of season one of career mode. The start of my F1 career here. Five red lights are out and we're underway. And it's initially quite a good start then. Then bogging down in second and third gear with some wheel spin. Raikkonen makes a good one. The two tire rosses behind me of Butler and Albin side by side into turn one. Trying to have a look to the inside. Doesn't work out. And instead, we've got the both tire rossos have actually dive bombed me on the outside there. We're three abreast with the tire rossos. We're side by side with Butler there. Straight away getting into it with one of our F2 rivals there from the previous feeder series. But we remain in P17. Squeeze out our fellow Brit. And uh, we're going to chuck in behind Raikkonen, who's also finding it quite tricky to get uh, past. Basically, a, a moving chicane blockade of uh, Weber and Norris there. Weber and the Williams car trying to go around the outside of Norris. We're going to try and go down the inside, uh, uh, vice versa, of uh, Raikkonen here. We make it work on the track soon. We've got a lot better exit there. And we're up into P16 now. And Weber has been squeezed out by Norris. We're going to have a little cheeky dive to the inside of the Williams car. And it's going to be a late move there. But we might just make it work. P15 on the exit. But we have to jostle for position because we are neck and neck. So lap one, love it. We're getting straight into it with both our F2 rivals, Weber and Butler, on the same lap. Round the outside we go, though, of Lucas. And we're up now, finally, into P15. Use the exit and use the engine to hopefully try and get away. But that Williams car is not too bad in a straight line. That's where most of the performance is coming from that Williams car, I suspect, is a straight line speed. But in the background, you can see Raikkonen is struggling a little bit there, being attacked by the Toro Rosso car. So, so far, so good for us. Maybe Raikkonen's getting to grips with a heavy Alfa Romeo car versus in qualifying where he beat me here. But we'll see how it goes. We move on to the end of lap number two now, onto lap three. And we're catching this train, which is tail ended by Lando Norris in the McLaren car. I think the leader is a Haas who's going a little bit slow. And there's a Ferrari of Sebastian Vettel in there. I actually, if you, if you paid attention to the grid sequence, you would have actually seen Sebastian Vettel was in P11 with a grid penalty. So I believe Vettel actually must have got pole position here in Australia, but then got some sort of penalty that moved him down to P11. So much like Gasly in real life, Australia, Vettel is going to have to try and make his way through traffic. And he's actually finding it quite difficult right now, it would seem. And so we're closing up to this entire train. There might be some overtakes to be uh, had, potentially, if these guys start fighting, uh, maybe. And that's exactly what's going to happen here. Sebastian Vettel's finally going to wake up and try and overtake these cars. And it's going to be a three-wide moment as Vettel dives to the inside. Lock up from the Haas. And it's a brilliant overtake by Sebastian Vettel there. Double pass to the inside of the McLaren and the Haas of Grosjean. And I think that's Norris or Sainz. I think both of them are in there. Yeah, it's uh, Sainz because Norris is still tail-ending that fight. And Sainz just remains ahead of Magnus in there. But great overtake by Vettel. And and finally gets into some clean air. So he'll probably be waltzing off into the distance now. But here we are. We're still behind Norris. And we're actually gaining on him. So could we make a move potentially? Not uh, maybe into turn one here. But maybe off turn one into the second DRS zone. I think we could. As we're going to chuck it into turn one over the curb. Try and get the exit as early as we can already. You can see Vettel getting off in the distance here. We're gaining on Norris. But not too much maybe. But we're going to try and make a late move to the inside. It's a big lock up on the front right. It's a huge dive. But we made it work up into P14. And that's very much like one of those heroic dives we saw so many times at Melbourne when we first had these aggressive aero cars in 2017. You know, that kind of saying of, you know, now with these uh, new aero regulations, you just have to go kind of big and bold with these moves to make it work, really. And that was a testament to that. And now we've got Lance Stroll battling Grosjean there. Lock up on the racing point car. And those two wheel to wheel. Nice action here. So we're just sitting back here with a, a bucket of popcorn at this moment in time because I can't really do much until uh, now because Grosjean lets off the throttle and we go down the inside there. Another lock up from so you can tell I'm struggling a little bit with the braking uh, for sure on this game uh, so far. There's going to be a lot of lockups in these first few episodes, I think. But we make it work anyway, and we're able to control that. Meanwhile, though, update for you guys in the actual top race here. It's Leclerc that leads the way from Verstappen from the two Mercedes cars. So Verstappen was the one on pole position. He inherited that pole, I believe, from, like I said, Vettel having pole, but with a penalty. And so uh, uh, he's uh, lost that, essentially. Now Leclerc is the one that leads the way ahead of him. And then the two Mercedes, Red Bull. Then you've got the likes of the Renault cars, of course and then kind of a tail end kind of train that we were a part of and we're in the middle of right now as we chase after the Canadian Lance Stroll 
and then maybe try and get on the back of Carlos Sainz. Meanwhile, back behind us, you've got Grosjean, Norris, the two Torosa cars, Lucas Weber and the Williams still ahead of Kimi Raikkonen. So Raikkonen's really struggling for pace on these uh, soft tyres here, it would seem, at the start of this Grand Prix. To be fair, also, I've just had a great start in terms of getting away from that traffic that maybe is bogging down Raikkonen because that Williams car, like I said, is very quick in a straight line. So maybe that's really holding him up here. And of course, uh, I've kind of been helped out with a lot of cars ahead of me fighting and kind of slowing themselves down. But as we now cut onto the action on lap number seven, onto lap number eight, trying to catch Lance Stroll there. Bit of a bad exit, but with DRS open, we're going to gain a lot on the Racing Point car. Very slippery, it would seem. Our Alfa Romeo Racing car is, as we go round the outside of turn one, it's going to be a really nice overtake. They leave him the space, and he's going to actually keep it on the outside there. And he's got the foot down, that Mercedes engine working well for Stroll. And so he's kept it on the right-hand side. We're going to have to keep on going the long way round. It's a fantastic little scrap with the Canadian, but we get it eventually to the inside there as we enter the next left-hander up into P12. And now there's a bit of a sizable gap to Carlos Sainz. We'll have to see if we can try and close up on him. Uh, the McLaren, it was pretty good on the R&D front, so I think the McLaren should be pretty good, but I'm feeling I'm feeling the groove of Australia. I've definitely dialed in as we've gone on through this race. I didn't feel this comfortable in qualifying, and actually now, speaking of uh, trying to chase after Sainz, I actually do have to do some defending first against Lance Stroll, because that uh, Mercedes engine really is packing a punch in that racing point car, but we maintain that P12, and we will try and go all the way then to lap number 9, which will be our first pit stop then, so no issues being attacked uh, any further by Lance Stroll, but we didn't really gain that much on Carlos Sainz, I can't lie, but we come in then for our very first pit stop then with the Alfa Romeo team. Let's uh, hopefully see it's a, it's a good one. We didn't have any, we didn't, I think we had level one, didn't we, on pit stop efficiency, I think. I can't remember what the contract we signed was, but I think it was uh, level one on pit stop efficiency. We'll have to see later on after the race, maybe, but uh, that was a decent stop. I mean, didn't get held up too much by that Toro Rosso coming in behind us and the uh, and the Williams as well of Russell, but Butler there and the Toro Rosso's behind us in P16, but we come out then, I think we've uh, pit earlier than Raikkonen, so we've got a few cars to overtake that are going to come in eventually in the pit lane. So not to worry right now that we're in P15. We should come back out into P12 where we were, which I would take. If we finished up in P12, I would very much take that because, you know, from P17 to P12, that's a decent, decent effort, I would say. But now we move on to lap number 10 and we're about to see something very, very funny come up on the screen in terms of notifications. It's going to be Devin Butler is out of the session. So the man that I said I wanted to slap has now just had a bit of bad luck and here he is there, replay camera, his Toros Honda going up in smokes and he's out of his very first Formula 1 race. Oh, didums, Devin, didums. Well, if you weren't such a dick to me in F2, I might have uh, cared a little bit more, but uh, no, I'm just going to laugh at you. So that's a retirement for him. So pretty good score. I'm beating uh, Weber already in the race and Butler's uh, indefinitely out of the Grand Prix. So that's uh, double good for me at the moment. On lap 11, we're up into P13 then. And we have one more position to get for free in the pit stop phases. And then we're back up to where we were. And that is going to be, I believe, Lance Stroll, I think. No, it's going to be Hulkenberg. So I don't think Lance Stroll's pit yet. So perhaps maybe Stroll's doing a, a one-stop, maybe. Hulkenberg's also on to set of hard tyres, the white wall. So maybe he's doing a one-stop as well. So... Uh, I haven't actually uh, looked into that too much of who's doing one stop and who's doing two stop yet in the midfield fire. That actually might be quite uh, interesting to see what one turns out to be better because there's Lance Stroll finally in the pit lane. So we've gained one free position somewhere up into P11 rather than back up to where we were before the pit stops in P12. So I'll take it right now, but I don't know where that's actually come from then. So we'll have to see how that pans out later on in the race. But we now move on to lap 15. And ever since we went our pit stop on lap 9, we've been trying to chase down this man, the Spaniard in the McLaren, Carlos Sainz. And it's taken those six laps to catch up to him finally. But here we are now with DRS activated on that back straight. And we're going through the last few turns trying to suss out maybe do we have the exit speed to maybe get him through the last corner onto the main straight. We'll have to see as we go through here, planting the power down, open DRS. Are we going to have the speeds we gain it and gain it? We will. We'll have this we're going to fake to the right go to the left very nice little fun move there and shake and bake him and we're up into p10 of this grand prix we're in the points paying positions now lads this is looking very very good supremely good for our first race ever in Formula 1 with the Alfa Romeo team here. Ricardo up ahead is being blocked by Kevin Magnussen here. So a bit of a blockade. So Magnussen, it would seem like, is holding up Ricardo quite a fair tree. And that's helping me out because on to lap 16 already we're on the back of the Aussie man. The home favourite here of this running Grand Prix, of course. And we've got a great exit here. Nice panning shot here overboard and seeing what Ricardo's going to do. Will he have the speed to maybe make a move on the Haas guy? He's going to try on the outside. Magnussen locks up under pressure from the Honey Badger. But can we do anything to get in the middle of 
of this fight maybe and try and catch Ricardo napping. You know, he's going to be looking forward rather than backwards and that's exactly what we'll do. We'll make a huge dive to the inside there. Double lock up, but Ricardo saw us there, had the spatial awareness to give us the room. Kudos to him and we make no contact actually and we get that move done quite cleanly despite the lock ups and we're up the order to P9 and we're also going to straight away now get onto the back of Kevin Magnus and he brake checks us a little bit into turn one so I can see what Ricardo is having issues with. He's definitely a little bit slow into the entries of these corners for some reason. But here we go now in a straight line with DRS. Second bite of the cherry on the outside. Similarly enough, Carlos Sainz goes for a move on the outside. Ricardo, love it. Two by two by two. And we're up into P8. And I think Carlos Sainz might have just got Ricardo as well. Uh, but I think Ricardo is on a one-stop potentially on the hard tyres, I think if I remember correctly, with those white wall tyres. But Magnussen is definitely on a two-stop here, and he's struggling for the two-stop as we're up into P8 now. So we're well into the points now, and we're only one place off. Best of the rest, P7 of Sebastian Vettel. It's looking very, very good. But we move on to lap 18 then, and we're going to come in finally for our second stop of the afternoon then onto a set of medium tyres, the yellow wall tyre, and we'll see how many positions we're going to lose here. And obviously, a few of these guys who are one-stopping will effectively gain that position indefinitely to the end of the Grand Prix. So it's up to us and the other two-stoppers to go out there and overtake them and re-overtake them. Carlos Sainz also comes in with me, behind me there. So both of us in for a set of mediums, I would imagine. But I think Lance Stroll, going back to a one-stopper, speaking about them, uh, I think Ricardo's a one-stopper. I think also Lance Stroll definitely looked like he was one-stopping. So I think he's got out ahead of us. And so we'll have to see how this pans out. I have a bad feeling the one-stop actually might be very uh, powerful around here and that we actually just caught, uh, got caught out, or the team rather, got caught out. Because remember, my team was the one that gave me the two-stop. And, you know, it's a brand new game. I don't know what the tire wear is going to be like. I don't know what the tire wear is uh, specifically like on the Alfa Romeo car. So this first race, I just thought I'd trust the team and they selected the two-stop for me. So, I don't know. Obviously, we have a lot of homework to do after this and see what what, what, what better ways to go about these races. But uh, Raikkonen is in and a few other people are in. So, we're up into P10 then. But Lance Stroll is there in P9. So, we've got nine laps to go in this Grand Prix. And I believe everyone ahead of me and ahead of Lance Stroll is going to the end of the Grand Prix. So... Now we're in a bit of a tricky situation. We're going to have to just try and push as hard as we can and try and see if we can try and catch Lance Stroll in nine laps on our medium versus his hard tyres. But that is otherwise pretty much our race starting to wind down this last phase of the Grand Prix. Meanwhile, just updating you on the race lead fight because in this first race, I think it's quite important to see who's going to go on to win this Grand Prix. At the moment in the lead is actually Valtteri Bottas because that was Leclerc in second, not first, and Verstappen in third because Leclerc is doing a two-stop. So he's the only man in that top... Uh, top, in the top three teams that is doing a two-stop. Everyone else is on a one-stop here on the hard tyres. Leclerc's gone to a set of uh, mediums. He's on the same strategy as myself and he's actually making it work because here he is now catching up to Valtteri Bottas, going for the move on Valtteri Bottas and he's getting into the lead of the Australian Grand Prix and may well just see this through for the win in the first race of this season there. So great stuff there from Leclerc. Bottas second, Verstappen in third, doing a fantastic job to be fair from that inherited pole position with the Red Bull pace versus the Mercedes and the Ferrari but we move back to our POV then lap 27 and we have been catching Lance Stroll my engineer has been slowly telling me you know we are reeling him in a little bit you know the time gaps have been getting closer and closer but the tyre wear now is also kicking in for me I've also had to try and save a little bit of fuel on ERS as well obviously the ERS and the fuel both very tricky to manage in the opening rounds of season one of career mode because you've got no upgrades on the car and uh, yeah it's just very difficult to actually see through uh, when you don't have any of that stuff but here we go then race winner is Charles Leclerc wins the Australian Grand Prix, the first round of this career mode in F1. But we're here on the last half of the Grand Prix. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we'll be able to get Lance Stroll unless he has an absolute major issue in this last sector. But you know what? I'm going to take a massive positive from the fact we're P10. We're going to get our first points in Formula 1 straight off the bat in the first race. That is absolutely, that's, that's great stuff. You know, we're the F2 reigning world champion. We've come into F1 and straight away we get points on the first point of asking. Really good stuff there. Raikkonen really struggled this race. We made the most of our car for sure and the kind of situation we're in with a lot of people fighting ahead of us and losing time themselves. And so I think we can be very, very happy with that result. P10, one point on the board. You've got to start somewhere. And that's been the Australian Grand Prix. Good job. You did really well. Super driving. Here's our winner, pulling their Ferrari into Park Fermi. What a fantastic race it was. What do you think it was, Ant, that gave them the edge over the competition today? Well, this was a real team victory. They put together a solid strategy today that appeared well suited to the conditions out on track. The driver did everything that was expected of them in the moment to really execute the team's plan to perfection. A shining example of how F1 really is a team sport. Here comes
become our winners now. A thrilling race and a tremendous effort by Ferrari. Their history is well known, so it's no surprise to fans the world over to see them come out on top once again. So you can see there by the race results, the only person that was above me in the standings on the in this race that did a two-stop was the race winner, Leclerc. So really showing the one-stop was the way to go, unfortunately. But, you know, like I said, my team locked me into that. I kind of gave into that because I didn't know anything about the tire wear levels. But like I said, it is a learning curve. And that's what's always exciting about starting brand new career modes on brand new F1 games is it really is a big learning opportunity of trying to suss out everything and trying to get to grips. A lot like the real-life drivers do in real life, getting down to the nitty-gritty, doing the homework. What the, what the best way to drive the car is in the game, how to save tyres, how to manage the ERS best and the fuel, because they all are a little bit different compared to last year's game. So, But, uh, you know, I, like I said, I'm very happy with P1. So let's go to the interviews with Claire. Uh, I think I'll be pretty uh, chirpy about uh, how, we, how we went. Amazing performance out there. I'm sure you're pretty happy with that. How do you think Devin will react to having not been able to finish today's race? Right, so we get a question straight away about Devin Butler and his DNF. I'm going to say he probably wished he had my car, you know, stick it to Torosso a little bit. And I'll to big up my team, Alfa Romeo, a little bit there. Uh, play a bit cheeky with Devin. That was a good race for Lucas. Are you pleased to see him doing well? And now we get given a question about our former F2 teammate, Lucas Weber. Obviously, he did quite well in the Williams car. And I think uh, I'm going to give him a compliment because I think we have that kind of respect and relationship from F2. So compliment to there. That's going to have a rep increase. You gained a lot of positions during the race, didn't you? Uh, yes, we did, of course, from where we qualified. And I'm going to attribute that to the nimbleness of the car, I think. I think it was nice and nimble. Definitely was able to try and move and uh, maneuver it about quite nicely, actually, compared to what I yeah, did in quality. You really looked in control of your car out there. Your team must be thrilled. And so for the final question, I thought I'd try and compliment the team on the right-hand side and say I couldn't have done this without them. You know, it's the first race. Got to give kudos to them. And that's going to give me a sportsmanship uh, increase, actually, to my surprise. Great. Well, that's everything. You're not the only driver to be handed by the press. Emails, like the one I've just sent you, will give you an insight on how your former Formula 2 rivals are handling the press. Be sure to check your emails regularly, as I'll be sure to send you any of the more, let's say, interesting press transcripts that come my way. So interesting. This is the very first time I've seen this mechanic in the game then. The interview transcripts from our F2 rivals there. So the F2 rivals, uh, Lucas Weber and Devin Butler, will also be asked questions and interviews. And they will be asked about you sometimes as well. So literally Weber there has answered a question about my good race. He said, what kind of ex-teammate would I be if I wasn't you know, happy for me? Uh, yeah, seriously though, one of the most committed drivers in the, in the competition. Definitely deserved to gain those places in the race. So obviously he's very respectful of myself because we had a very good relationship, like I said. And and obviously with Butler, it's going to be a little bit different there. He's been a little bit kind of, you know, cagey and not really giving too much of a compliment, saying both of us fairly new to Formula 1. Uh, former rival wants to show what they're made of out on track, but I think coming to Formula 1, a lot of drivers are underestimating our skills and our opportunity to prove them, so he's kind of bringing the question back to him. So that's really cool to see, the first time we've seen that, in the interview's transcripts. And so that will come out throughout our entire career. We'll see these transcripts like every other race, not every single race, but every other race, and see what they're saying about us in their own race as well. And that just adds a little bit of context, a little bit kind of subplot storyline I guess to, to the rivalry if you will from F2 following on so very very nice. So the final bit of business then in this episode before the, we round this out is going to be the R&D now we have a lot of points to spend because of course you start off with being given uh, like uh, just over 1,000 points at the very start of the weekend and so now we've got over 2,000 points which means we can go ahead straight away dive in with two major aerodynamic upgrades I'm not surprised Alfa Romeo's R&D tree begins with two major updates on the front and rear down force because it needs it. It seriously does. And so we've purchased both those uh, upgrades. Those are going to take four weeks because obviously it's early days. Our contract does not give us any upgrades on the speed of the upgrades quite yet. It was none on our contract. So it's going to take us four whole weeks, uh, i.e. four races to get those upgrades in. So Azerbaijan is when we'll first see the major front and rear downfall. So it might be another bit of struggle town in qualifying perhaps in the next two rounds here but we'll have to see. Bahrain next round. It was always a very tricky race race in F1 2018. Let's see how it goes in F1 2019. But all in all, very, very happy with how that first race went and really enjoyable first experience of F1 2019 F1 career mode. So guys, if you did enjoy it as much as I did there to race and commentate, then be sure to smash that like button. I've got to say, thank you guys so much for the insane response on episode number one. You guys absolutely went berserk on that with the number of likes, the comments and everything like that. So, so crazy. Thank you. Thank you so much. And hopefully we can try and somewhat match it for episode two here, the start of F1 
one season. But just thank you so much for that. Uh, and do let me know what you thought about this episode in the comments below to that effect. And if you are new around here, do get subscribed for weekly Fall On content. I will be having daily career mode going out over the next couple of weeks. Obviously, one episode. Uh, we had two episodes today, but from now on, it will be one episode every single day. So be sure to check the channel every single evening for that episode then, guys. And I'll see you guys next time. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye.